Wow, how do you like that? I did an entire five minute blog and deleted it. <laughs> Anyways, the beauty of technology. Today's blog is about um, continuous improvement. And I, I took my guitar out today because it's something that I've actually worked on myself. It's something I love to do. And I think if you're passionate about dentistry, the way I'm passionate about my guitar, about life, about the things that I do, I love my job and I love sharing my knowledge. Most of what I've learned has come from you. And uh, maybe not you specifically, but your colleagues. And I've been around for since 1983. So about 27 years I've been in this business. And yes, I'm 43 years old. I started young. I, was, I grew up in a family dental business. I've been involved in all aspects of this business. And over the years, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've learned from my mistakes. and uh, and But I do want to share. I think the best thing I can do for anybody is just to share the things that I've learned in the dental practices that I've worked with. What I've noticed in the practices that seem to be successful. By successful, I've learned something along the way. Success isn't necessarily the money. Success seems to be the happiness. And uh, having a, having happiness seems to lead to the money. So, and the passion with dentistry seems to bring in the money. And it's, uh, if that's an important factor, it seems to work the opposite way. If that is your main motivation is just the money, seems that you're always going to have struggle or you'll never be happy. So forget all that. I'm not here to give a lecture about anything like that. I'm here to tell you what I've observed. So continuous improvement is something um, I look at my dentists who come out of school. They spent all that time in education and made big investments in opening up a clinic and then they stop improving. They made all that time in their lives to take to go to school and to learn something new and different than what they were doing. And then they get into a clinic, they open the clinic and that's it. They're set for 20 years. They think that's all they need to do. It seems like you lose your motivation and happiness if you don't continue to improve. Same thing goes for all of us in life, I believe. Um, if we stop learning and enjoying what we're doing, we stop being happy. Anyways, and that's the same for your staff, not just yourself. So. Some of the things I, I say, uh, I was going on in my blog about um, some of the improvements that have changed, some of the things that have happened over the last five years. I've been in this business a long time, like I say, but the last few years have made some dramatic improvements in our business. And these aren't technologies and things that just came out. These are things that have been in development for 10 and 20 years, like digital x-rays, CAD CAM and lasers have been around for many years in other industries, even many years in our own industry. I just think that in the last five to seven years, they've gotten to the point where they're really good. And uh, at least you should take the time to educate yourself. So anyways, I wanted to talk about my dentists and the characteristics of successful dental practices. And I'm going to focus today about some of the uh, things that they've done to continuously improve. So uh, one of the things I've noticed and one of the questions I get is, Warren, everything I'm doing is working so good. Why do I need to learn something I already know so well? And I, I was going to say the characteristics of a successful practice, the guys that are happy seem to take what they already know how to do well, that they're comfortable with, and they look for ways to improve it for their patient's sake and uh, to, to do it more efficiently. Nowadays, you can offer those procedures that you're doing. So I'm going to talk about one in particular and then talk about a few. The first one I've noticed is many of you offer uh, rotary endo. And uh, nowadays, the benefit of rotary endo is, and I'm being told, and this may not fit in with your philosophy, but many dentists can do an endo in one sitting, um, in one appointment. The benefit for your patient is huge. They don't want to come and have multiple treatments. It makes us nervous as patients to have to get in the chair and get multiple needles. It's not a fun experience to sit in the dental chair. The, uh, especially to get an endo. So if, if you can clinically offer something that you're comfortable with and if you educated yourself and found that there is an advantage to using rotary endo, that is a uh, one thing that I've taken the time to learn myself for my customers and we've offered and trained approximately 60 dentists. Almost every single one of my dentists have come to my rotary endo courses and have gone back and, and offered the benefits of rotary endo. It's one improvement that most of my clinics have made that they're very happy with. So something to look at makes for a happy patient. Another thing uh, that my clinics are starting to look at now, and I think it, now is the time to look, are soft tissue lasers, some of the procedures that you perform every day. Clinically, um, it, I've been told by some of my dentists that, that a soft tissue laser is slower than 
uh, a technique that they're using right now. But I think it's the advantages for the patient. It's maybe a slower procedure in the chair, possibly. But I think it's a technique you could learn to get faster at. But I do believe clinically it's better for your patient. Um, from what I've seen, that they tend to heal faster and uh, with less trauma. Um, if you're using it in, instead of packing cord to stop the bleeding, it seems like you get a nicer, cleaner um, finish. So it's something worth educating yourself on. It's procedures that you do every day that I think clinically would be advantageous to your patient. Anything that's good for your patient makes your staff happy. Like I say in my blog, if your patient's happy, staff is happy, and the doctor's happy. And again, it's a big loop. You just continue to improve, making the patients happier, making your staff happier, making yourself happier. The money comes and the success comes. Some of the other areas I've observed my successful practices uh, that continue to improve, I have offered orthodontics or some basic orthodontics, or at the least understand orthodontics. And same with implants, even though some of my clinics haven't gone on to offer implants in their clinic, they've gone to courses and understand implants. And I think that's an important thing. If you're going to recommend them, it'd be good to uh, understand what's going on with the procedure. Um, CAD CAM, big impact on your bottom line. And let me explain this from the patient's point of view, because I don't even care about the money so much as I care about it as a patient who's had that type of dentistry performed. Uh, I believe there's that it's a clinical skill that most dentists have to learn. And I believe that good CAD CAM dentists, once you've gotten the skill perfected, you would never know which crown in a patient's mouth is a CAD CAM crown or which one's fabricated at a lab. Because the fact is they're using some of the same machinery at the labs now as they use clinically in your office. It's just the skill level that needs to be observed. So if you're judging buying a CAD CAM based on some of the poor CAD CAM results that you've seen, then maybe you could say that you've seen some bad dentistry and, and might not want to be a dentist. I'm not trying to be a smart ass on this, excuse me, but I'm just saying that clinically CAD CAM, there is some amazing CAD CAM dentistry being done. It's a skill level and doctor, you have the skill level to learn this. Now, the reason why you want to invest in this technology is for your patients. I am a CAD CAM patient and one of the things that I enjoyed is only having one appointment. That was a huge advantage to me. Uh, and, and a big reason that I would get, uh, even if I wasn't in this business, a big reason I would look for a dentist that offered that service. I would like to find a guy where I only have to go in. I, have, I value my time and I don't want to go for multiple appointments. I don't want a temporary fix in my mouth while I'm waiting for the permanent solution. Um, I want a really nice crown put in my mouth in one appointment. One freezing, one shot, one deal. Two, even if it's two hours in the chair, I'd rather have two hours and one appointment than multiple appointments. It's a lot less time off of work. And ultimately, if you're doing a good job, I should have the same result in my mouth anyways. So um, if, if you're not believing what I say, at least take the time to investigate this. I think it's had a big impact. I know the dentists that I've worked with that have implemented this into their practice it's made a big difference to the way that they do dentistry and uh, they would never go back to not having CAD CAM in their office. So if it goes with your philosophy and way of thinking, it's good for your patients. I am a patient. I can vouch for that. Other stuff that I think it's gone beyond um, something that you should even consider, I think it's almost mandatory, is digital x-ray, uh, panoramic x-ray, intraoral cameras and patient education. Imaging in your office is important. Uh, uh, a picture says a thousand words. We've all heard it a million times. Doc, if you have a digital camera at home, think of the reasons that you got that camera and think of what you see on that screen and think of what your patient, how your patient might benefit from seeing what you see. There's a lot of value in education. It, it would suck if the only thing I could do is tell you to buy something and hope that you, I've done a good enough job of convincing you that I'm the expert that you need that. You need that new chair. And uh, when can we schedule to put that in? So much easier if I show you, if I educate you on the advantages of why you need a new chair and why it'll help you out and, and make you feel better. Uh, perio, I wanted to talk about the investments my uh, successful practices have made in Perio. They, if they have a six month or one year recall, they make sure that their patients understand the importance of getting back in that chair. Good oral hygiene, leads is comes from a well-educated patient so the doctors have made good investments in making sure that their patients understand the value of what they're doing in that hygiene room 
I've heard a percentage. I've heard that 80% of the treatment that you book comes out of that room. So it, why would a patient book with you if 